Hey guys, so here I'm going to show you how to apply the, the skin shader in Maya and I'm going to show you some of the things you got to look out for and if we have time I'll maybe squeeze in the DX11 shader today if not I'll have that ready by the weekend um, so let's go and apply that shader to this guy and before we do that let's go and um, make some three point lighting so to create, you guys saw me do an earlier tutorial on this, I'm just going to grab a point light and do my W key on this guy. He's probably far away from the grid. There he is. I'm not sure why this guy's so far away. It might be me just testing him out. I was creating an expression for promotional pur purposes. This is one of our characters we try to do in 3D. We eventually decided to go back to 2D because it just looks cooler. New control D. Move this over here. Three point lighting. So this guy will be my key. This guy will be the fill. I can probably move the key a little bit over. Not your standard right in front. And control D, move this to a back. Normally you can do like an area light for the back, but I'll just do point lights for now. Um, let's see what this guy's properties are. Do shadows. We'll turn on mental ray. And this guy will leave him with no shadow. Only one will have a primary shadow. And lower his quickly lower his strength so he's not so strong and demanding. I think I can do this one here. Boop boop boop. Let's see what it looks like though if we do mental ray. Blackness. Let's go in. Uh, oh, we got an error. Ah, mental ray needs to be put back on. So let's go and turn it on. Every once in a while there's a glitch with Maya where your mental ray settings will be turned off. I didn't know why that happens. I'm going to turn mine off and on again. Mm, okay. Force close. Auto load and turn that off. Okay. Cancel. Let's see. Hopefully the auto load will cause it to not be dumb anymore. And pull up my renders. It's acting a little buggy tonight. Close that real quick. Actually, open that real quick. Let's go to quality. Final gather. Now, if you want a fast render for final gather, set that to 50 and your point density to 3. A lot of people think you need to crank this up, and you actually can get good results if you keep that low. And I think I mentioned in an earlier tutorial. I'm going to raise this up a little bit higher. He's on ray trace. Let's do a quick test of his render. And minimize this for a second. Let's apply a new material. Doo -doo -doo. Looks like his material just took a dump and a texture that was associated is gone. So let's go sign a new one instead of going from here. Actually, yeah, we'll just go from here. It's fine. Open up new. We're going to slide down. We're going to go to the skin shader. I got V ray in here. I can easily can get lost if I'm not careful. And there you go. Fast skin shader. Click on that guy. We'll say use create new. We'll just do brand new one from scratch. Grab this dude. There it is. Ignore that expression stuff that came up. Do a quick render to see what it looks like in default. Yay! So the whole reason you saw that acting weird is it just when I imported it just acted a little odd and decided it was disconnected. Um, the texture didn't come with it apparently when I threw it out. That's fine. Um, let's go in here and do quality. We're going to do a production. Remember whenever you do this you always have to go back to indirect and turn these back on just because the only reason Maya has this feature is so that you um, are in full control it is a little bit annoying it'd be nice to keep those settings I have my stuff set at half so to speed things up sometimes what I'll do is go under render and in render I'll go in here and set my test resolution to like 50 percent in this case since it's just him we're gonna go uh, render our default 640 by 480 nobody uses that anymore but uh, we'll use it in this case. Get a little higher quality. There we go. But you'll notice he looks a little waxy, right? He looks a little not too interesting, a little bit dull. And the reason why that's happening is because he's, his scale needs to be tweaked out. And we can change that if we go to the actual object skin shader properties. Because a lot of people just jump into the substance scattered layer and mess with these. But really what you need to mess with, if we go in here, let's go to our... Da, 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 algorithm control and you want to mess with scale now our scale conversion set to 1 if we go in here and increase this a little bit 100 and we'll save 
our old version by clicking on this icon here and we'll render again you'll see how its handle will change. You'll notice that there. And actually, let me soften him up a little bit in the normals department because he's got that weird thing he never got removed from surgery. So we'll go to soften edge on this guy. And uh, also, let me rotate him in the opposite direction so we get a little bit more control of what he looks like. Cool. Get a little more light favoring that secondary light. And you'll notice he looks a little uh, waxier here, so you have to be careful because the lower numbers you go, we had it at 1, if we go 0.5, um, let's do 0.5 instead of 5, oh, there we go, type fail, and we'll do a, uh, a render. You'll notice he looks a little bit more um, realistic, or at least cartoony, at what we're exaggerating here. So the higher we go, let's say we do 200, You'll notice he's going to look more like kind of like solid marble. There's going to be less light passing through. So this works like real scale, like on a real model. Uh, so you just have to keep those things in mind. And uh, I'll make this, uh, we'll do 0.8. Let's try that. And we can render this out. There you go. Probably a little bit. One wasn't too bad. Let's try one again. I didn't mind it too much. We can play with it a little bit more. So we can go zoom in a little bit. And if we want to tone it down, we just go a little bit higher. So in this case, we maybe do three even. And I'll save it. It's actually not too bad. And uh, now what we can do is play with some of these numbers now. Again, you have to do initial scale conversion first. Um, lower numbers, uh, depending on the size of your object, your lower numbers can give you um, more of a, a realistic feel. The higher numbers can give you more of a like you know marble, something that has a less surface area, uh, thin areas for light to pass through. So the back, you'll see we have the back scatter color. I can increase that too if I want to using my back scatter weight. Um, this controls back scatter radius overall encompassing the object, depth, how thick that light or how much that light's going to pass through the thickness of the object. Um, I'm going to go here and do scatter weight. So I'm going to actually make it scatter more across the object a little bit. And we'll do, for the heck of it, we'll do um, I'll do one. And let me save my last render so we can compare. And sometimes if you just mess with these numbers, you'll notice it'll be slight changes. So you'll have to go a little bit higher and maybe work your way down. That's what I do sometimes when I'm uh, kind of stuck on a, a look and feel that I want to get. There we go. So you'll see the thinner areas get a little bit redder by the ear, next to the throat, just by me messing with the scatter weight. And if you want, you can use that plus messing with the scale conversion. So we can go back to two if we want to, and then we'll save the last one, and we'll render again. Cool, not too bad. Looks a little cartoony, and we can play with that a little bit more. So let's go through some of these properties real quick. The epidermal is exactly that. This is the top surface of your skin. This is where you're going to put like the scars and the freckles and so forth. And we can play with this guy and make some freckles generically on him real quick and just paint him out. Um, or even a scar will make, maybe make him look dangerous. Um, and we have subdermal scatter color. And this is uh, what you can do for, um, uh, well, you do some veins in here. Um, you can do some tissue damage if you want. And back scatter color. Now, this one can be a combination of veins plus flesh and uh, um, you know, a little bit of blood pooling. Any, anything that you want. It's great for zombies to work in this particular area. You can load all sorts of gross stuff that are underneath and they'll only pass us through the light. A little bit more vein detail on that one. Um, so you can play with these and you can really get some good stuff. Now, overall color and diffuse, be careful when you load channels in here, you can override some of the other stuff that you already have in place. But these need to be really strong. I want to point that out. Their contrast, their levels, their curves, this is Photoshop speak, um, need to be really, really strong as in pronounced. Um, because these things average out all the different layers here. Uh, Maya will average them out. So if you don't have a very strong contrasting uh, object in here to, to demonstrate the freckles, scars, or whatever, or even veins and tissue. Um, if you're not strong enough, they'll get muted. So just let you know, whatever you have in Photoshop is going to get muted in this particular uh, region. Well, let me increase the size of my guy real quick, and we're going to maybe just throw a scar on him, and you can see a little bit 
of my process when I'm texturing. So let's go to common and we'll go to, uh, we'll do really big here. We'll do 1080. Well, it's not really big, but it's almost twice the size. And um, let's go and export them out. So we got them selected. We're going to go to UV Texture Editor. And when I go to export my UVs, I'll go in here and use UV Snapshot. I used to use the PSD export, but from one version of Maya to the next, it gets a little buggy. So we're going to do PNG. And we'll do Browse. And we'll put this guy somewhere we can grab it. For now, I'll just put it on the desktop. I need to clean up my desktop. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right, we'll go in here and do uh, Drake head and save and hit OK. All right, so we got this guy exported out the door. We're now going to go in here and we'll do one more render. So it'll be a little bit bigger. And you'll notice it's really fast. I know he's just one object, but if you set your final gather to the settings that I'm telling you, it actually works pretty nice. Don't overthink it. Don't um, try to put all your stuff cranked up. That doesn't always pay off. Believe it or not, you can get some good results using just Final Gather, not Global Illumination, and they can come out pretty fast. Okay, cool. Probably needs to be smooth a little bit. He went from three or four different programs, so there's a little bit of a normals and faces that need to be smoothed out. All right, so we got this guy here. Let's go ahead and add the scars to him, and I'm going to make him a little bit nicer, and I'm going to cheat. And we're just going to smooth them out, which will fix some of that archiving or backed up normals that are acting weird. All right, so we got this here. Uh, close this down. Let's go into um, Photoshop. So hopefully uh, my computer doesn't break with my and Photoshop at the same time. You can also, if you wanted to, um, send your stuff to Photoshop using the PSD network. And I do have an older video on that. I think it's on YouTube. You can dig it up. I'm not going to use it because sometimes it is a little buggy. But let's go straight in Photoshop here. I have CS5. Haven't installed 6 yet. I do have 6, though. All right. I just want to make sure I'm not too unhip with you guys. Okay. So we go here, and we'll open up our UVs. All right. Let's go and grab them. We'll go to desktop. There we go. Let me see. Drake UVs. Where the heck are you, buddy? Yeah, I do play games, whatever. Judge me later. All right, so where do we put him? A little bit of slow load. Sorry, that's because Camtasia's uh, working in the background. There's Drake Head, open it up. And the cool thing about um, having this set up is I can go in here and just do a new layer. And I can place my base um, overall texture. And I always do this for color purposes. Let's find a little bit of tan. We don't want him to look like a pirate. We want to make it look like he at least had some vitamin C. And we'll dunk that in. Control Z. We will move this layer down, the new one, and then we'll dunk in there. And then we have just the base color to work off of. And you can see PG, PNG works really nice. You have a nice UV layout to play with. Kind of cool. All right, so I probably could relax him a little bit here in some of the other areas to prevent stretching, but I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. Um, you guys have seen other videos where I've done that. So what we're going to do is going to paint a scar right on the side of his face. Now I'm going to do a search for a scar. It's probably not the best way to do this. Um, or we can just grab freckles. I do have on my Pinterest a freckle area. Hmm? There it is, faces. So I do have a little kid's face. We could steal some of his freckles. Oh, this one's perfect. We'll do this. So this is one that um, one of my friends on, um, let's go back here, one of my friend's uh, sites that she's come up with, um, Katya, she works at Blizzard, and she's a really awesome person, but she actually has a uh, really nice collection of uh, textures and so forth. So I'm going to, uh, our face references, I should say, I'm going to grab one of these and you can grab these as long as they're not copywritten I'm gonna do this just for demo purposes but if it's copywritten just keep that in mind you want to be careful of that um, they all look like freaky children so we're going to save image <laughs> and I'll put this also on the desktop I cracked myself up um, she's got some good freckles and you can combine these if you find them but again make sure they're not copywritten this is it looks like exhibited in Milan so um, I would not try to sell these oh my gosh Mother load of freckles right there. Perfect. Let's save that too. 
cool. So let's go back into Photoshop here. And I'm going to lower my UVs here so they're not too distracting. Sometimes it can be hard if you have a dense mesh. I'm going to go to File, Open. So not every resource that you grab necessarily going to give you the best um, resolution. So just keep that in mind. You'll have to do some tweaking always. This is a pretty decent resolution here. And let's grab, actually let's grab the cheek. Grab one cheek here, ignore the hair. And we'll edit, copy. We'll do freckles instead of scars. I don't want to disturb you guys on YouTube if I, uh, if I find some really disturbing images on accident. Paste, hey, freckles. And we're going to get our color to match a little bit on this kid. So we're going to do freckles only on one side. And I'll clean this up in just a second. Um, so we're going to do it just on one side of his face. He's like the biggest freckles ever. And uh, we want to get the color to match. So we'll do that real quick. So I'm just going to grab partially some of the color there. And I'm going to get an overall. That's, a, that's about right. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to go to dunk that layer again. We'll dunk it one more time. Oh, Control Z. I'm going to make sure we do it on the right one. There we go. Cool. A little bit closer. And uh, so now the thing, the question that happens to a lot of people when they put these in here, and let's move this down below the UVs, um, is how we're going to blend these together. And it can be tricky because if you bring in freckles that you maybe took a close-up picture of your face part of your hand you like the the hairiness of your arm and the manliness you want to be able to blend these things so they don't suck when you mess with them one way you can do it is you can actually create a mask so you can create a quick mask in here and when you create a quick mask you can go in here and paint black or white depending on your brush let me lower my brush it's kind of ridiculous right now so I can go in here and paint some black and you can blend it and masking works really nice it's actually not too shabby um, another way you can do it which I like a little bit better is I'm gonna go ahead and undo that mask real quick so we don't need it and again it uses black and white if I paint black you can feather it out gray will get make it tra semi-transparent and white will uh, discard it um, let me get out of the auto mask here. And you can always break the link. I, I just decided to go back in my history. I can go in here and go to this guy and go to my patch tool. And the patch tool works great. This allows me to isolate a region. And I can get it to blend with another region. Now, what you'll do in this case, we're going to have to be careful because there's nothing to blend here. There's, he's all by himself. And I island in a world by himself. I'm going to grab both these guys. And what I do all the time is go in here and I duplicate layers just to keep these ready if I mess up. Even though they might be in history, you can be working late at night, it happens to me all the time, and you can mess up. And we're gonna merge the old ones. With them merged, I can now use this patch tool more efficiently, and I can select the area that I want to blend, and I can drag it over and it will blend it. Give you a nice blending to it, and it gives you a somewhat decent, it's a little extreme here, but it usually gives you a somewhat decent uh, breakdown of it. Okay, and you can play with it. So you can do this a combination of the mask and this guy here too. Let me edit, undo select. Um, we're gonna do this a little bit more efficiently here real quick. I just thought I'd show you that tool because I think it's amazing. But we're gonna add a skin texture real quick that we'll just grab off the web. Um, these are so great to play with. I'm going to turn away before I get lost. All right, so skin texture. And we'll go here. We'll just grab some random one. I'm going to show you how we can blend if you've already created a base. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a base in another video, and that'll be mainly for DX11 because that base is going to entail um, all the different uh, layers together since the DX11 shader is not so robust, but it's something you could possibly even use at another time. Let's go to size large. So we'll isolate some stuff here. All right, we'll get the skin color. That's kind of in our ballpark. Uh, oh, hey, look, somebody has some seamless skin color here. It's 
probably not very strong. DeviantArt, up for our purposes, we'll use it. We're not going to steal it. We're just going to use it for demo purposes. I'm big on that. I don't like when people take stuff from somebody else and say, I made this, and they didn't. So this is just going to serve our demo purposes. So let's go and uh, open it. Thou shall not steal. Open this up. And pull this aside. And I'm going to drag him into our scene. He's going to probably be really dinky winky. If he is, I'll just scale him up. No big deal. There he is. He's so tiny. Oh my goodness. And uh, I'm going to move him into place here. Oh, he's not too small. There he is. Yay. Not too bad. A little bit low res looking like he's been stretched up a couple times. And um, we're going to move him back. We're going to turn off our freckle that we had before. And we're going to paste our freckle again into the scene. Paste. There we go. And then now, like I said before, we're going to duplicate. Duplicate. Duplicate layers. Hide the old. Boop. Boop. Now watch this. With these guys, we're going to merge them. And this works a little bit better, the whole patch tool I've shown you, when you have more of a texture space to work with. So I'm going to grab this region here, drag that over, and you'll see it blends really nicely. See that right there? It's a little bit easier to hide the discrepancy, having two different types of textures to play with. Photoshop can fake things a little bit easier. I wasn't doing that before, which made it a little bit difficult on the software and you could totally tell some of the weirdness and you can see a little bit of stretching going on it's just um, trying to find a balance between these two I mean this could be like a wart if we want it and then we can do the patch tool for the rest of it so again we'll just do the clone snap I should say not patch tool um, and I'll hit alt select a region and we can do some cloning it's very light I have it the type of brush that I'm using um, I'll just kind of feathers it when it does it, which is really convenient. And you can hide some of that weird stretching that's occurring. Cool! Alright, so I thought I'd show you guys that real quick way to do your textures. Now, what we need to do though, let me go and back up out of this and look at, compare it to our UVs. What we need to do is we need to get this contrasting. Now you're going to see a big square in his face. Big deal. I'm going to go in here and duplicate this skin a couple times. He's supposed to be seamless. We're going to trust the interwebs. And I'm going to move it to the other side. Let me turn my snapping on. And we'll move it to the other side there on the neck. And I'm doing this without um, editing his UVs a little bit further, but that's fine. Right there. Same thing. Duplicate. He's going to have like a weird freckle everywhere. It's going to be weird. His family's going to stare at him at Christmas. Duplicate layer. And move it over. I know I'm doing this granny way, but whatever. And duplicate layer. There we go. And move that over. Doop. There we go. So we got this here. So what we need to do, we need to actually make it so it's really contrasting in those areas. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this old school. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to use my dodge and burn. So my burn is going to give me more of a contrasting feel and look to this. And I can change my exposure and choose if I want midtones, shadows, or highlights. And you guys see me do this before if you saw me do um, the demo using Mudbox also. So I go in here and just burn it through. We can do midtones. We'll do shadows. Get that a little bit stronger. Make sure I'm on the right layer. Whenever you don't know you're on the right layer, you can always right click and say layer copy. It'll go straight to it. There we go. That's why no results are happening. You can use the move tool again, right click, and it'll tell you what the layer is that you're working on. So convenient. So I'm going to make this really distinct. Really going to look like he has a tumor. It's not freckles. It's a problem. Go in here and just play with this a little bit. Ignore my dumb voices. I do lecture like this. I'm going to love it there. Really make this harsh. And you really want to exaggerate them because remember what I said, it'll blend it. It's going to blend this. And as you use your brush tools, you can actually get it to jitter if you want your brush to constantly rotate. So underneath our brush settings over here, 
we can mess with our shape dynamics and you can set angle jitter up and it'll actually rotate a little bit like you would with photo with a mud box all right save this let me see make sure i got the right name here drake head png cool and um i'm gonna flatten it real quick sure for now save and we're going to go into where we want to load the freckles at in Maya. Click on this guy. And we want to load it under on our epidermal. So I'm going to open up epidermal. Some words are fun to say. Epidermal is one of them. And we're going to go to the folder. And we're going to scroll down. Let's go to my desktop real quick, which is quite cluttered. Drake head. We're going to open that up. Now, you're not going to see immediate changes with this when this happens. And uh, it looks like my skin shader did not apply. So what we're going to do is force it to get on this. I noticed that sometimes 2013 does this. So let's go to render editors, hypershade. And I'm just going to drag it on him. Because he should turn red when you have it on there. One more time. All right. And then we'll select him. And we'll cheat. Assign material to selection. Cool. All right, cool. That's weird. I see it's on there, but it usually turns red. It's not turning red today. We saw that it was working earlier, so that's just probably me being tired. All right, so we got this there. We got our epidermal. Let's do a quick render. And we'll see... What's your little freckles? It almost looks like he's been eating pudding. <laughs> probably should have raised that a little bit higher. But you can see we have to really make them strong for him to show up. Okay? Cool. So I thought I'd show that to you guys a little bit. And again, you can play with some of these. Um, I'm just as long as this video is long already. But it's the same principle if you want to do veins. Um, again, um, you want to do uh, epidermal for freckles and scars, subdermal for like veins and other maybe a little bit of uh, damage and so forth. A back scatter could be also uh, a little bit of veins, but mainly tissue is it's going to be focused on, and that's about it. All right, cool. So again, radius covers over the object and weight handles the actual strength of that color popping through. That's it.